Neil Carlson here on the phone with me at Greg Gustin National Weather Service in Grand Forks talking about all those tornadoes down in the Otter Tail area. I understand you took a look. I, like There was more than one, wasn't there? Well, first of all, there were ones in the morning, and that's from the uh, downburst wind squall line with embedded tornadoes uh, that occurred in the wee hours of the morning. So that so you had tornado tracks embedded in squall lines, so what we call quasi-linear convective system. So generally in the EF-1, a little bit of approaching EF-2 damage uh, to some power lines and stuff uh, out by Henning. Um, most of the damage uh, north of Otter Tail Lake and and actually west from there between, say, east of Elizabeth and up toward there is, is still pretty much in the EF-1 scale range. Um, but somewhere, so that one, two, possibly three uh, weak tornado segments embedded in that squad. And how fast are winds in, in that scale of tornado? So you do have to ask that, don't you? Oh, Let me okay. see. So the EF-1 scale covers winds up to, and I am turning the page on my piece of paper right in front of me, that are winds up to 110. Okay. So EF-2 indicates stronger than 110. So typically when you're getting power poles in the clear, snapping, you know, you're starting to push up toward that. So. Okay. That's kind of one of the things I look at in that mix. And the big stuff came in the afternoon. And the big stuff was in the afternoon. So we went from squall line with embedded tornadoes in the morning to then having the big power hog supercell. So a squall line, big lines of thunderstorms, big footprints of damage over a broad area. But these supercells are, are actually much smaller but much more intense. And so those are the ones that produce the more sustained and usually stronger and more uh, deadly tornadic type things if they if and when they produce that. So that's uh, that's what we had in the afternoon. And uh, of course, a beautiful sell from all the uh, meteorologist and storm chaser world because you could see it out in the clear. It was one distinct storm. It didn't have a lot of other stuff around it, so wide open visibility. But just again devastating in its path so okay so there you go uh, uh what one of the uh what did you say one of the biggest tornadoes down there is the ef3 uh, so i we actually ended up rating it as an ef4 and i just sent that info out officially here just a little bit ago and uh, of course part of the process that we use when we get potentially greater than ef3 is uh we 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 activate other wind experts around the country to weigh in on things so that we get a consensus of opinion so that we're using uniform standards across the country. And so we had people in Omaha, in Boulder, uh, where's Mike? But, you know, various parts of the country that were uh, weighing in on different areas of expertise to help us. And, and the last thing here then, I guess, uh, how how fast is it? EF4 or how big oh, okay. is it? So yeah, we rated it conservatively, and I'll say use that word, we conservatively uh, with winds of 170 miles an hour. An EF4 Whoa. range is 166 to 200. And so, uh, but there's still, there's there's variance of opinion on, on those of us on the team as to how strong it really was. But one thing with, um, you know, we kind of kind of came up, come up with a consensus of opinion there. And one thing is we, it's rural, you really, they, it's the, the Klemek homestead that got, you know, that house is off the foundation and decimated in the distance. Okay. okay. And it was well built, built to code, um, sill plates, walls, two-story house, uh, bolted down to the concrete block foundation, but still the bolts are all there, and the sill plate and house and everything got torn right off and... and Literally fragments off in the distance. Not, not the house is off in a pile right here. It's it's obliterated and spread out over, you know, a square mile or more of space. All right. Well, not that we don't get tornadoes quite often, but nothing that strong. At least we don't. No, see and that's why you know one of the difficulties in the rural areas, of course, is the the material. In this case, you you don't have too many of those things that are that strong you know your typical pole shed at a farmstead you know that's uh, to, to del you know we had one of those that was damaged by the, or destroyed by this it's still only ef2 because of the nature of the structure yeah 
That's all it takes. The machine shed, even though it's a well-built machine shed with a steel infrastructure, it's on a concrete slab, big open doors, big open space, EF3 is about the max. So then you have to you have to look at all the other things, trees, the big vehicles, and all this kind of stuff, and try to see if any of that um, indicates that higher wind potential and, and that. So so okay. all of those things kind of get a look over, and and uh, we end up with uh, a best estimate based on available information, which in this case is somewhat limited, but still the best we can okay. get through with that. All right. Thanks for talking. I see we got a little stormy weather coming up this weekend, but hopefully nothing that bad. Well, hopefully, you know, and I get to work lovely evening shifts, so I'll be watching yeah. that uh, up close and personal again, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, it's uh, we had a couple of days of break, and I still have to see if I can get home and mow, mow my lawn yet today, yeah. and mosquitoes <laughs> will carry me away, or what's going to happen. All right. Okay. Thanks for talking to me. Have a good weekend. You too. Take care, Neil. All right. Later.